Hello, this video is to help you understand the basics of how to use a Dutch oven, how to cook in it, how to clean it, and how to store it. So let's get started. The first thing you need to do is gather your supplies for cooking. You need to start with a Dutch oven, a lid lifter, there's two different kinds, a scraper, some kind of oil, animal fat, vegetable oil, a charcoal chimney, you need a thick pair of gloves. These are Dutch oven gloves, or you can also use welder's gloves. You'll need some matches or a lighter. For cleanup, you'll need a whisk broom, a fireplace shovel, and a metal bucket. For placing the charcoal, you'll need a pair of tongs, preferably some that you don't use for food. And you'll need paper towels and a dish rag. Also, you'll need a metal trivet of some kind. You'll need paper, newspaper, or cardboard, you'll need charcoal, and you'll need some kind of heat resistant surface. These are two kinds of Dutch oven tables. That's a Dutch oven stand, and this is a Dutch oven table made for cooking Dutch oven on. The first thing you need to do is figure out how much heat you need and what type of cooking you're doing. Once you figure that out, you'll know how many coals you need. To start, you need to put your fire starter underneath the charcoal chimney and fill it as full as you can. Then put in your needed amount of charcoal. I typically do a little bit more than necessary. Once that's in there, light as much of the paper as you can. That way you'll be able to light the charcoal quicker. While that's heating up, there are a few things that can be done. One of them is putting some water inside of a bucket. This is for your charcoal. Fill it full enough that it will extinguish any charcoal, but not so full that you can't empty it. Place that on a heat resistant surface. Now, you need to put your food in your Dutch oven. Once you've done that, take it over to the Dutch oven table where it can be ready for charcoal placement. Now, you'll wanna take a look at your charcoal. Once it has gray ash on the outside and is nice and glowing, dump it out onto your Dutch oven table. This makes it easier to get to the charcoal and also makes it so you don't burn your hand. Using your tongs, you're gonna to wanna place the charcoal where they go. For roasting, you'll have even heat throughout the oven, which means you'll place the same amount underneath the oven as you do on the lid of the oven. This way, you get the effect of an oven in your home. This will be things for things like roasts and some stews and slow cooking. Here I've placed eight on the bottom and eight on the top. And in that size of oven, it will give me about 350 degrees. For baking, you'll want most of your heat coming from the top. So here I've only placed six on the bottom and I've placed more on top. That way you get an even distribution of heat, but you also don't burn your bread or whatever else you're baking. The chart earlier is mostly for baking, but it will give you the right number of charcoal for other kinds of cooking. Since what we're doing is just heating up a soup, all of the heat will go on bottom, which means I don't need any of these extra charcoal. So for safety, I can scoop them up with my fireplace shovel and then I'll be putting them in that water. When you do, keep your face away because it will steam and you don't want to get hurt. As you drop them in the bucket, they'll sizzle until they go out. That's why you need to put it on a heat resistant surface. Once that's done, you can take your shovel and your whisk broom and start sweeping up any ash left over. This will make cleanup later on easy. Once you check your food and it's to the desired temperature, now it's time to remove it from the heat so you don't overcook your food. You'll do that by using your lid lifter and if you need to, the gloves that we placed earlier and lift your Dutch oven with the lid lifter off of the charcoal and placing it on that metal trivet. That way you can get to the coals, but it also gives your food a chance to rest and to stop cooking. Once your food's been eaten by everybody, it's time to clean up. Take your plastic scraper, once the oven is cooled, 
and scrape any excess food away, making sure nothing stuck to the sides. Once you've done that, you can then take some warm water and pour it in the oven. This is just to help carry away any debris that may be getting in the way. Once you've covered the bottom of the oven with water, take a dish rag and just continue to wipe the bottom and sides. If you don't feel any debris left in there or anything stuck to the sides, your oven is clean. Go ahead and empty that water either in your garbage can, in your garden, or in your campfire. Once that's done, you'll need to dry your oven thoroughly to avoid it rusting. Rust is the main killer of Dutch ovens. Take a paper towel or a lint-free rag and wipe it thoroughly to make sure no water is left on the inside or in the cracks. Once that's done, take your oil, vegetable oil, lard, canola oil, or shortening can be used. Apply a small amount and using a fresh rag or paper towels, wipe the inside of the oven to remove any excess oil but also to spread the oil around to all surfaces of the inside of your oven. This is called seasoning. The more you do this, the more your oven is protected, and as you do it throughout the life of the oven, it continues to provide a protective coat and also helps it become more non-stick. That way, your oven can be used for years. Place a clean dry paper towel on the inside, place the lid on top, and you're ready to go. That paper towel is there to absorb any moisture that might build up. Wipe off any extra ash and apply a coat of oil to the top of the oven if you feel the need as well. This way, you continue to protect it from heat and damage as well. Once you've done all that, your cleanup is complete and your oven's ready to use. If you keep doing these steps, you'll be a pro in no time and your ovens will last for decades.